Imagine you're cleaning up your grandfather's attic and you stumble across an old wooden box. And inside, beneath a moth-eaten Civil War uniform, you discover a film can, an old rusty film can marked Abraham Lincoln on slavery, December 10th, 1860. Come with us on a journey of imagination as we explore the inner feelings and thoughts of Abraham Lincoln as he dealt with the slavery issue, the most divisive and important controversy of his era. Congratulations, Mr. Lincoln, on winning the presidential election last month, and I want to thank you for taking the time for my interview. Thank you. Although I have been reluctant since my election to speak out on the issues of the day, lest I seem to be apologizing for my victory or intimidated by the threat of secession, I am now willing to reiterate my stated position on the slavery issue so that the public may have a better understanding of it. I am naturally anti-slavery. If slavery is not wrong, nothing is wrong. I, I cannot remember when I did not so think and feel. My father treated me like a slave, rented me out to neighbors for whom I had to work hard in the hot sun all day. I then had to turn over all my earnings to him. Whenever I hear anyone arguing for slavery, feel a strong impulse to see it tried on him personally. Let him endure what I did at the hands of my father. My family moved from Kentucky to Indiana when I was seven, partly on account of slavery. In Kentucky, our cabin faced the Cumberland Road, which ran from Louisville to Nashville. I can recall seeing coffles of slaves herded right past my front door. Lincoln hated slave trading. When slaves were sold, they were moved about in coffles, that is, they were chained together in large numbers. And Lincoln saw these slaves moving past his home in Kentucky, and the image burned itself into his consciousness. Lincoln saw slave auctions in New Orleans when he was a young man, and what he was particularly alarmed by was seeing women sold into slavery, women whose complexion was quite white. And this uh, made a profound impression upon him, as it did for many Northerners. Mr. Lincoln, do you feel that slavery is immoral? Slavery is a moral, social, and political evil. The sum of all abilities, a monster. It is founded in the selfishness of man's nature. Opposition to it is his love of justice. In 1854, Lincoln made anti-slavery his central focus. He had spoken out against slavery before, but as a Whig spokesman, he had concentrated on economic matters. Lincoln explained his shift in emphasis. I've always hated slavery, I think, as much as any abolitionist. I've always hated it, but I've always been quiet about it. I always believed that everybody was against it, and that it was in the course of ultimate extinction. And if the Union is dissolved, do you believe all, all slaves should be freed and given equality with the white man? While I am personally opposed to this peculiar institution of slavery, I am not nor ever have been in favor of bringing about in any way the social and political equality of the white and black races. I have never seen, to my knowledge, any white man, woman, or child who is in favor of producing a perfect equality, social and political, between Negroes and white men. On April 11, 1865, two days after Robert E. Lee surrendered, Abraham Lincoln gave an important speech. In the course of that speech, he urged that black people, at least those who had served in the Union Army and those who were very intelligent, by which we assume he meant literate, should be allowed to vote. John Wilkes Booth heard that speech, and he turned to his companions and said, that means nigger citizenship. That's the last speech he's ever going to give. I'm going to run him through. Three days later, Booth carried out his threat and assassinated the president. Thus, Abraham Lincoln was a martyr to black citizenship rights, as much as Martin Luther King, or Medgar Evers, or any of the other civil rights activists who were murdered in the 1960s. It's especially appropriate that in the year celebrating Lincoln's bicentennial, the first black president was inaugurated. 
Frederick Douglass called Abraham Lincoln emphatically the black man's president, the first to recognize his rights as a citizen and a man. If Abraham Lincoln were alive today, he would be gratified to know that a black man with the help of white voters and black voters alike was elected to the highest office in the land. Come with us on a journey of imagination 